Hello, my name is Liz Sample and I'm a senior in animal science at Iowa State University. And today I'm going to be giving a presentation about placentitis in the mare. It's only a few months into the new year and you, along with some other horse owners, will probably be expecting some new foals from your beloved mares. Every day, you take time to go look at your mares to make sure they're making good progress in their pregnancy. One day you might note that a mare of yours has some unusual discharge coming from the vulva. You bring her to the veterinarian and your mare may be diagnosed with placentitis. This is a scenario no horse owner really wants to experience, but placentitis is a leading cause of fatal and neonatal death in horses. According to Dr. C. Scott Bailey, placentitis is responsible for 10 to 40 percent of late-term abortions in mares. To help in the understanding of placentitis, this presentation will cover what placentitis is, how it can be diagnosed, and some possible treatments that are available should this unfavorable event occur. Placentitis is most simply defined as inflammation of the placenta. It is most often caused by pathogens such as Streptococcus equi and E. coli. When these bacteria enter the reproductive tract caudally through the vulva and vagina, they can create an infection. The most common clinical sign is premature utter development, but vul vulvar discharge is also a symptom of placentitis. These clinical signs generally develop late in the course of the disease. Mares that, are most common, that most commonly get placentitis have had multiple births, are above middle age, or they often have poor perineal conformation. The body wall surrounding the pelvic outlet, anal canal, and neurogenital passage make up the perineum. Normal perineal conformation includes the vulvar lips that meet evenly, forming a tight mucosal seal, and are aligned vertically with no more than a 10 degree slope from cranial to caudal, as shown in this picture here. In addition, two-thirds of the vulva cleft should lie below the pelvic floor. This normal conformation is important as the vulva is the first effective barrier for the re for the reproductive tract. Any variation in the uterus may be vulnerable to getting an infection. As a mare ages, there may be a decrease in muscular tone which may affect the vulvar seal, predisposing the mare to an infection. Perineal tissues may get damaged from folding or breeding injuries, or the vulva may get stretched from repeated folding, resulting in a vulvar seal that isn't as tight. The picture here in the middle shows a vulva with a seal that is not tight and could potentially let pathogens affect the uterus. Another deviation includes the vulva creating a shelf that may collect feces and allow for bacteria to enter the reproductive tract. An example of this is shown in the picture on the right. There are currently three ways to help correct mares with poor perineal conformation. Caslix operation, the God procedure, and the transaction of the perineal body. If the mare is showing clinical signs of premature utter development or vulva discharge, there are a couple ways to diagnose if the mare has placentitis. Commonly used is an examination of the cervical star region using transrectal ultrasonography. When a mare is infected with placentitis, the cervical star region is the most often afflicted. Thickening of the ammonia or purulent material that has accumulated in pockets between the chorionolitoides and the endometrium are indications of inflammation. The picture here on the left was obtained on day 323 of gestation and a healthy foal was delivered five days later. The arrow is pointing to edema in the dorsal aspect of the uroplacental unit and in normal and this is normal in near-term mares. The other picture on the right depicts separation of the coronal allantois 
in the endometrium in the area of the cervical star, which is where the arrows are pointing. This is an abnormal picture. Another form of ultrasonography to assess possible placentitis is transabdominal. By using the transabdominal ultrasonography, the fetus heart rate, tone, activity, and size can be measured, as well as the integrity and thickness of the placental membrane. Normal combined thickness of the uterus and placenta, CTUP, those values can be found in the table. Although fetal heart rate may change with fetal activity, a consistently low or high fetal rate may be an indication of fetal stress. Bailey and others completed a study of the efficacy of treating mares with experimentally induced placentitis using tremethroprin, sulfamethyloxyl, pentoxifilin, and alternagest. Tremothyprin sulfamethyloxazole was chosen for its broad-spectrum antibacterial activity against the organisms commonly found in mares with placentitis. Pentoxifilin was used for its anti-inflammatory properties. Both of these drugs were known to pass fetal membranes. Alternagist was selected as a progesterone treatment in addition to the other drugs to support full viability. The study included 17 mares, five of them as part of the control group that did not receive any treatment. The mares, excuse me, mares in both groups developed similar symptoms of vulva discharge, mammary development, and combined thickness of the uterus and placenta. The mares in the group that got treated showed a less frequent placental separation. At the conclusion of the study, the mares that received treatment carried pregnancy longer and delivered more live foals in the control group. Even with these results, it must be noted that these mares in the treated group received aggressive treatment shortly after placentitis first occurred. The most common clinical sign used to diagnose placentitis is premature mammary development, which appears later in the development of the disease. Whereas in this study, they carefully observed the mares twice a day post-inoculation for vaginal discharge. Therefore, in a usual setting, placentitis may, be not, may not be caught as early as the mares in this study. Postpartum mares with placentitis are often treated with protocols including a combination of uterine lavage, antimicrobial, and anti-inflammatory therapies. Using uter uterine lavage treatment for two to three days after foaling, it can flush out the uterine debris and residual microbes. A broad spectrum antimicrobial drug can be used for five to day seven days postpartum and anti-inflammatory therapy for three to five days post foaling and these will help the mare have a uterus that turns back to normal. Most mares that receive these treatments have negative uterine cultures 14 days after the discontinuation of the antimicrobial therapy. Equine placentitis can be detrimental and have unfavorable outcomes. It is important to have mares that are reproductively healthy and have a good reproductive conformation. Mares need to be checked over regularly for any unusual symptoms and they can be brought to a excuse me they can be brought to a veterinarian if placentitis is suspected there are some treatments available that have helped mares carry a live foal to term when the disease was caught very early there is still continued research on how to better diagnose the mare earlier in the progress of the disease such as looking at the progesterone and estrogen levels as well as analyzing fetal fluid Here's a list of my references. Thank you very much for listening.